I think the key was that I was open and I was open to learning. Just never know when the right thing is going to hit that you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I love doing this. Yes. And then it changes your life. Hi, I'm Monique Kara. Welcome to the You Are a Work of Art podcast, where we lean into heart-centered creativity as an essential part of building our capacity for joy. Joy isn't just an emotion we feel, it's a reservoir of strength that enriches our brightest moments and carries us through our darkest ones. That's where I come in. If we haven't met yet, I'm a full-time working mom of two boys, an entrepreneur, and a fine artist. I've learned how to create in the margins of life. I get it, we're all busy, but friend, creativity isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. It is central to our purpose, our joy, and our legacy. Together, we'll explore practical tools to purposely nurture our creativity. Through the ups and downs, setbacks and breakthroughs, struggles and delights, it's all part of the process, and it's a journey you don't have to figure out alone. So grab your headphones and get ready to venture into your most joyful, creative life. This is You Are a Work of Art. Welcome back to another episode of the You Are a Work of Art podcast. I am so excited to be sharing this week's guest with you, Wendy Conklin, the chair stylist from Chair Whimsy. She is a former educator turned boutique chair decorator, helping people around the globe infuse personality, color, and whimsy into their surroundings. Through her company, Chair Whimsy, she offers various options to turn a boring and beige room into a whimsical and wow including a collection of ready-made designer chairs, custom chair design, fabric selection services, and a host of courses to unleash the DIYer's inner artist. It was so fun to sit down with Wendy. She is such a joyful spirit. And if you're looking for some type of creative outlet and want to try something new, make sure to stick around until the end. Hi, Wendy. Thank you so, so much for being here on the You Are Work of Art podcast. Welcome. Thank you, Monique. I'm excited to be here. Yay. Okay. So if anyone doesn't know you, you are chair whimsy and you make these incredible um, chairs, just upholstery that are super bright and fun. So I'm so excited to dive in today because we both love color. We both love being bold. (laughs) And I know that you have a course coming out soon to teach all the things for someone that wants to get into this space, which is so awesome that you're willing to share your knowledge with the world. (laughs) It's a lot of fun. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about just your journey and how you decided on your creative medium? Yeah. So I have always been like a DIYer type of person my whole life. Um, And I've always cared about like how the, my surroundings look. Um, When we were uh, students, we were up at the University of Chicago and we lived in student housing. My daughter was one year old uh, whenever we moved there. And like Mm -hmm. in the middle of our four years there, I had my other baby, but so we were in student housing and like, it really mattered to me what it looked like inside, you know, they were (laughs) apartment buildings built like between the 1920s and 1930s. So it's a four story walk up. We were on the top floor, um, which has its benefits, but there was no (laughs) elevator. So, you know, very narrow stairs. Mm -hmm. Um, But I cared about my furniture and we didn't have any money. We were dirt poor students. Um, And so, you know, I, but I cared. So I made my own curtains, which don't look behind them, but you know, they looked good from the front. (laughs) Um, I even at that point reupholstered a little uh, love seat for my daughter's bedroom. And so we gave her the biggest room of the three bedrooms because she was, she had so much stuff, you know, babies just have a ton of stuff. Yes. And so I put, I know. And so I put this, uh, (laughs) put this cute little love seat back there. I, I upholstered it in this really fun flower fabric and had striped little arms, but it was a big rolled, um, love seat. And I just had a book that I learned to do it by. 
Um, and so it was, it was, it looked terrible from underneath or behind, you know, you don't, <laughs> don't do that, but it was like something I wanted her room to look cute. And so I've always cared about having something unique, but I didn't have the budget to pay someone else to do it for me. So okay. I've always kind of dabbled in some things. And about 10 years ago, I took my very first upholstery course. It was exactly 10 years ago in the fall. Um, mm -hmm. I asked for it for my birthday. I was like, oh, I want to take this course. And so I went down to South Austin and took this 32 hour course um, over like six weeks on a Saturday. Holy and, moly. and then I took it again because I couldn't remember what we <laughs> went over in the class. Like I took <laughs> notes, but like with no videos to watch, you know, it was like, wait, now wait, how did I do that? And why did I do that? What came next? So I took pictures and I took, you know, notes, but it wasn't enough. So I had to take the course again. And I mean, the course was like 450 bucks each mm -hmm. time, you know, so, um, and so I took it again and, you know, could remember a little better, you know, and then I was like, all right, I got five little dining chairs let's open a shop and see if I can sell it. And so I, at the time was an educational consultant. I have been a teacher before that, but I wrote a lot of books and uh, trained a lot of teachers all over the U S so I traveled and did a lot of writing. And um, so that was my job and my career. And I really loved it and I was good at it. And, but once I started selling a few chairs, I just started thinking, Oh, I wonder if this could like be something, you know, mm -hmm. and then as you start being more creative and really enjoying it, <laughs> then you, you start not liking your job as much. So yes. that was kind of the beginning of the journey. And it took about six and a half years to quit my day job, which is a whole story in itself. Uh, but I, you know, I had to make enough money to support my family and mm -hmm. uh, before I could really do it. And so, um, but that, that's kind of been the journey and, um, I'm so, I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I bet on myself and I did it. Um, mm -hmm. it's just been so worth it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And what a great gift to ask for a class, especially yeah. a creative class because now you have this creative outlet that yeah. you've been able to build a business and a life around that is the dream. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And honestly, when I started, it was like, I've started a lot of things like, um, you know, I've, I've taken a lot of little classes. Like I took guitar for a while um, mm -hmm. and that was okay. I'd taken piano for a while. Um, I took e ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, which I failed at miserably, <laughs> but I just liked to learn. Like I'm a mm -hmm. lifelong learner. And to me, it's always a challenge. So I took this course just as a way to learn how to do it the right way mm -hmm. and also to redo my own chairs, you know, and then it was really halfway through that second course that I had to take. I thought, okay, I think I need to open an Etsy shop and just see, can I make some money? You know, and it was just a total hobby just for fun. Not even thinking that that would be a life-changing career move. Mm -hmm. um, but I was, I think the key was that I was open and I was open to learning mm -hmm. and you just never know when the right thing is going to hit that you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I love doing this. Yes. And then it changes your life, you know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you said that it took you about six years before you yes. went full-time, mm -hmm. six, seven years. Yeah. How long have you been full-time at this point now? So since 2017, I believe, uh, or 2017 or 2018. So let's see, um, it's going on four and a half years, I think. Um, that's awesome. That's incredible. My day job, do it full time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it really, and it, you know, it was so great that I already kind of was established before COVID hit. Um, because I mean, anyone who had a creative business at that time, oh my gosh, sales like went through the roof, I think mm -hmm. for almost everybody. <laughs> so, um, and especially if you're in the furniture business, I mean, people started, they were all stuck at home. They're looking around saying, <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like that. I mean, <laughs> I need to buy in there. They didn't even care how much money it was. You know, I think mm -hmm. they were just wanting some hope and wanting some joy because, you know, that's, yes. that's really when it boils down to, that's what I sell. I sell joy. Um, it's not necessarily, it is a chair, but it's more than that. It's, it's something that brings happiness to people when they see it in their kitchen. It's like, it brightens their day. Yes. And, uh, you know, so it's, I think you probably know that from selling art. You too. are speaking to my heart right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cause that's 
what I believe my art is, is bringing joy to the world. And I honestly believe that if more people in the world felt joy, it would be such a better place. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so just like, whether it's your chairs or my paintings, somebody being able to with it and really embrace it in their home, their space, their offices, what, what have you is so, so great. Yeah. <sighs> and you know, the funny thing is, is when I started doing chairs, I didn't know that that's, that would happen. Like, I didn't know that it would mean anything to anybody. And I think one mm -hmm. of the things I struggled with, um, because I've taken like the Clifton Strengths Finder test. And so one of the top five is significance um, that I have. Okay. And so for me, that's like, you know, what I'm doing, does it matter? Does it make a difference? You know, and that, so I really care about that. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I remember thinking, okay, so I do chairs, but why, what does that matter? You know, yeah, someone mm -hmm. might need a set of chairs, but that doesn't really matter. And they can go to world market and buy chairs or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I remember when I started getting like emails and I got this really nice card from one of my clients who took the time to write me a card. And she said, and she said that every time I walk into my kitchen, I just feel so much joy when I look at those chairs. And I began to understand, it's like, oh my gosh, are you serious? Like, and then even better than that, people who, who don't even buy my chairs, but they would message me on Instagram. And like the one lady I remember several years ago said, um, I struggle with my depression my whole life. And every morning I get up and I look for your post because it brings me hope and joy. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Like, I just, you know, you have no idea how what you do affects other people until they tell you. And mm -hmm. I mean, wow, that like, okay, that checked off the significance <laughs> box for me. I was like, okay, I am making a difference through chairs and how silly that may sound, but it really does bring a lot of people joy, whether they buy my chairs or just see my posts or they take my courses and they can create themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been able to do that for people. And that is so meaningful for me. That's awesome. It is actually a big deal when somebody messages you because people don't do that. They're too afraid or they're just like, oh, they're, they're not going to care. Yeah. Um, so all of our listeners message all your favorite artists. <laughs> yeah. I mean, tell them what and, they do for you because, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, it makes, I, I, for me anyway, and I'm sure for you, it just, mm -hmm. it makes such a difference to know that other people care because we're in our own little bubble over here, right? doing our work, keeping our head down, producing, you know, whatever art we're doing for orders or whatever. And just, you know, we don't, you don't know the kind of difference you make for people. So we should all take time to tell the people that really help us uh, in those ways, what they mean mm -hmm. to us, because it, it is very meaningful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think I've messaged you something like that too, because I just, that's really been on my heart. Like the last few months is, are people resonating with it or are they not? Yeah. Um, just like when you see something, say something, um, yeah. no matter how small it is. And like you said, whether they buy or not, like you're still influencing people and you're still bringing joy and happiness to their world. Yeah. Um, I think that's so great that we're yeah. able to do that. Tell me a little bit about your creative process. I have watched plenty of your videos yeah. <laughs> on Instagram, <laughs> like your process videos and how you work with patterns and stuff. But can you just explain that a little bit more for our listeners? Yeah. So if I'm doing chairs for a client, it's basically about creating, you know, getting fabrics that work for their space or fabrics that they really love. So that I usually, you know, I start out with asking them a bunch of questions like, okay, you know, what are, what are, what kind of patterns do you like? You like florals, you know, um, what colors do you love? You know, um, what colors do you hate? <laughs> you know, so I know to stay away <laughs> from that. Cause that, you know, you gotta have rules, right. To be able to create and, um, so that's usually how the process starts. And then I hunt down fabrics to, if they have a certain space that it's going in, the fabrics need to work in that space, or if they have just a blank slate, that's when it's really fun. But, you know, also a little scary too, because you, you know, you, you're trying to narrow down. There are so many fabrics I could choose. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to narrow down what their vibe is, what they love. You know, I mean, like, you're not going to come to me if you don't like color, right? <laughs> You're not going to order <laughs> one of my chairs. If you like, 
beige, you know, mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever you're going to, you want some color. And most of the time you love pink and florals, like all the things that I love. Um, and I think part of that, it's taken me years to be brave enough to do what I really love. I, I think a lot of artists, well, at least myself, you know, at first, you know, you're concerned, well, I want something to sell. I want, you know, I want to please everybody, but you're never going to please everyone. And I really think the only way to really stand out with your art is to do the thing that lights you up because Mm -hmm. number one, no one can be you better than you, um, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and if you're, if you're willing to be open and tell and show people what you're, what really you love, be brave enough to really open yourself up and say, this is me, you know, this floral crazy chair, this is what I love. Um, not everybody's going to like it and that's okay because we all have different tastes, but when you can put your stake in the ground like that, I think that can make you stand out, you know, Mm -hmm. from the crowd, um, instead of just copying what you see other people doing, like really go for it. And, um, someone messaged me the other day, should I, should I stay safe or should I go for it? I'm like, <laughs> you should know how I'm going to answer this, you know, <laughs> but go, I mean, for you know, it. go for it because and then you're happier doing mm-hmm. your, your art that you do, you know? And mm-hmm. I mean, that's like, if you're going to do something, especially for a job, and if it's something that you're creating, like you should just do something that you really like doing, you know, mm-hmm. you don't want to get stuck doing things. And I mean, it took me a while to, I used to have um, like grain sack beige chairs for sale. Like, believe it or not, I did because I thought, oh, that's what people want, you know? And, and finally Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I really hate doing those and I'm not Mm going to do those anymore. And I've taken that picture down. Yeah. I'm not going to sell that kind of thing anymore. And so I do think a lot of it is just having the guts to do it. But so my process, if I'm designing for myself, that's the hardest thing. Because it takes me a long time to make up my mind, but I can help other people do it just like that. You know, it's really, very mm-hmm. fast. I can do that. But for myself, it's, it's a lot of thinking, a lot of looking at the different fabrics, a lot of figuring, like looking at it in the room. If I'm going to redo my chairs, so I'm about to redo my living room chairs. And I've had this fabric in there laying across these chairs for like two weeks just making sure every time I pass through there, do I really like that? Do I, do I really want that? Is that the right thing for in here? And it's I finally a long process. Said, yeah, it is. I mean, <laughs> I just gotta be patient because once I make up my mind, that's it. I make it up and then I'm usually right about it. Now I have made mistakes, but I just redo the chair. You know, it's mm-hmm. not a big deal. I don't take it too seriously. I, I kind of, like I have a very playful attitude. It's about playing. It's about creating. It's about having fun. And I don't like feel a ton of pressure. Um, and the creating part is really fun. And part of that is thinking a lot about it. I think for myself, I, I really have to think through what do I want? What kind of look am I going for? Does this look right? Um, and it takes time. But for other people, much, much quicker <laughs> of a mm-hmm. process. This episode was sponsored by my fine art, Monique Kara Studio. Art is an expression of who you are. Whether it's your home or office, art is what makes it yours. My paintings are bursting with color, literally. Color influences not only your mood, but behavior as well, making it likely one of the most important things to consider when adding it to your space. Inspired by feelings and emotions, my intriguing color palettes merge joy and calmness, as well as excitement and inspiration. Whether you're looking for a large statement piece or a small burst of color, my paintings are sure to lift your spirits. Shop available art at MoniqueCaraStudio.com and use code WORKOFART at checkout for a special free gift just for being a listener of the podcast. I'm so grateful you're here and I can't wait to brighten your space. Now let's get back to the episode. That's awesome. And I just want to circle back real quick. When you were talking about being brave, that gave me the chills (laughs) for one. I was like, oh yes, this is so good. Because I think especially working with bright colors or bold colors, or in your case, your fabric is your paint. And so 
working with that and not being afraid to, like you said, just go for it is great advice for so many other areas in your life too, not just like your creative medium. So thank you so much for saying that. Yeah. I mean, it does take guts to show everyone your true self and we don't want to do it because we're afraid of rejection. I think, I mean, I was, and, um, but I just, I remember back in 2018, just cutting loose. I was working with a, another artist who we put her paintings on fabric and did a collection together. Her name's Carrie Schmidt and she has amazing oh, uh, paintings. I love her stuff. She's in upstate New York. And so, you know, I remember having all these, like we had, I had printed out fabrics of her paint uh, paintings and I was sitting in my living room and I had them up all around my chairs and my sofa all around me. And I was trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do for the seats? And how do I make them all a little different? You know, and I had velvets and I had checks and I had stripes and, you know, I just, and I had solids. And, and I was just like, I just remember, I thought, I don't care if anybody else loves this. I'm going to do it. I'm just going for it. <laughs> I just, I remember like, that was a real defining time for me because I had, Yes, I always had done florals that I really loved, but I, I had also held back a little bit mm-hmm. and was it didn't really cut loose like I did then. And it was like, I was like, well, I don't know if anybody's going to love this, but I do. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just doing it, you know, and I mm-hmm. went for it and everyone loved those chairs and I still love them. I have them, I have some at my kitchen, uh, at my dining table. And I just, I mean, you know, so there is something to just, letting go of other people's expectations and really letting what's in your head and in your creative mind just come out and and just let it happen. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid of rejection because I mean, the people who aren't crazy about your art, they shouldn't be following you anyway, you know, and it's right. But the people who, but that's how people find you too, is when Mm -hmm. they see something that is so you you know, because only Mm -hmm. you can be you really. And when they see that and they see how joyful you are in what you're creating, Mm -hmm. it's something I think that really stands out to people and it should, it makes a difference. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, it's just some, I, I have so much fun when I'm creating like that, that is really a lot of fun for me. So that's, you know, not all work is fun, but (laughs) that is fun when I get to design, you know, Mm -hmm. and I really can just go for it. Um, you know, that's, that's a lot of fun for me. So then what would you say is your least favorite part or the most not fun part? I don't even know if I phrased that right. Yeah. Oh gosh. Well, there's a couple things. I mean, I think one, if we're talking about chair creation, one of them, uh, is like sanding mahogany chairs when I'm trying to sand all the mahogany off. (laughs) to get the bohemian look. (laughs) Oh my gosh. And it's so hot here in Texas. So, I mean, you know, you're covered in red dust and I mean, I'm filthy mess and it takes hours to do this and you have to do it outside because you don't want your workshop to be covered in that stuff either, like ruin Mm -hmm. everything, but it's so gross and I really hate doing it but I do it because I get the best look. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. it's like one of those things, like I know I'll be happy when it's all over with, but I really don't like doing this right now. Mm -hmm. That's that's one thing I really hate doing because, you know, sometimes work is work. I mean, it's, Mm -hmm. it's work you don't like to do. I mean, you you can't have it good all the time. Um, So there are some (laughs) days where it is work like days like that. Um, And I really dread when I have to sand chairs to get them smooth and stuff because it's so messy and I really procrastinate. Like I put them off, put them off, put them off <laughs> until the client emails me and says, uh, when are my chairs going to be here? I'm like, oh, next week, I promise. And then I'm in the shop sanding them, you know, doing what I need mm-hmm. to do. But so that's something I don't enjoy doing. So do you ever dabble in other creative mediums when you're not doing your chairs just to either kind of take a rest from your medium and working in and out every day? or just for new inspiration? Um, I think for inspiration, probably what I do, because like I said before, I'm willing to try new things and to learn, you know, like I took a painting (laughs) class um, and I I really suck at it, (laughs) you know, but I wish I was good, but I don't want to put in the effort, you know, like I did it once. It's like, okay, this is hard. I enjoyed it, 
and I learned a lot, but I'm not any good right now. And if I want to be good, I would really have to, you know, invest some time and also be very brave again mm-hmm. to, to just, which takes do. a lot of energy, <laughs> does take a lot of energy. And I don't have a lot of that. So I don't have extra. So, um, cause all my energy really needs to be saved for my work. But what yes. I do to like revive is I dabble in plants. Like I have a greenhouse that I built in my backyard during COVID. And and I spend a lot of time just like piddling around out there, you know, just replanting stuff, um, experimenting, you know, with gardens. Um, I'm not any good, you know, really at it, but I I like things to be pretty. And so I'm working on, I'm always fighting the squirrels out there which are (laughs) threatening to damage every pot that I have by turning it over but um but I I like that I like doing that I like going antique shopping you know at the antique malls because I like seeing old things and trying to reimagine them another way not Mm -hmm. just chairs I mean Mm -hmm. like I just love things with character and that are interesting like I have Sick. I have some pieces in my home. Like one is a big column from a front porch, um, from an old, I don't know how old it is. It's probably at least a hundred years old. And it just sits in my living room, you know, and, um, you know, my family made fun of me when I got it and they're like, what are you going to tell people about that? I'm like, it's a statement piece. People like my family so <laughs> not supportive of all my crazy stuff, but I mean, you know, they, they, I'm just like, it's, it's a statement piece. And so when people come over, they are like, oh, that's so interesting. I'm like, see, you know, <laughs> so my family, they had, they have a lot of fun making fun of me, but, um, yeah, as you've been talking, you just have all the ideas flowing in my head right now. I'm like, yeah. Ooh, like what if I could put my paintings on fabric and like, Oh yeah. Make something out of them. Um, and stuff yeah. like that. That'd be, that'd be so fun. Yeah. But, yeah. That's why, that's why you should take my chair course. <laughs> I was just going to you know, ask you about fabrics that. <laughs> on them and then make your own chairs. That'd be really fun. <laughs> yes. So can you tell, um, our listeners more about that for somebody that might be looking to try something new or just get into the creative space um, and how your chair course could help them out. Yeah. Yeah. So my sig, I've got lots of courses, but my signature course is DIY upholstery and it's an upholstery course that is online. It's for beginners. Um, You're not going to be tying springs. You're not going to be doing curved back chairs, not doing anything big, big armchairs. You're going to do chairs like you see me do. Um, dining chairs, you know, little Victorian chairs, you can do simple French arm chairs. Uh, and it's really the way to learn. I mean, like coming from the background of a teacher, it was always important when students learn something new that you can be able to complete your project. And when you have mm-hmm. a big rolled arm sofa, you're probably <laughs> not going to finish because it's going to be so frustrating and you're going to hate it, you know? And I mean, it's hard enough with like all the little things you have to learn just on a dining chair, it's not hard, but it, it, it's, there are steps that you have to learn. And once you get those beginning steps down and you learn how to do it and you'll be able to do these chairs really quick and fast. So they're mm-hmm. fast makeovers. Um, then you can always advance more difficult things if you want to. But what mm-hmm. I have found is a lot of my students, Hey, they, they're pretty happy with just doing this, just like me, you know, <laughs> and it's like, why stress ourselves out with a big, you know, Chesterfield sofa when we don't have to do that. I could just, you know, get someone else to do it or buy it, buy one from the store, which is actually cheaper than having someone do it. But so it's a, it's a course for beginners. You actually, um, it opens and closes a few times a year and the course is self-paced. So you can, you know, buy it and start right away, or you can wait a couple of months and then start. You can always go back and rewatch the videos. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, uh, you know, because you always going to need a refreshing, oh, wait, how was that? And then you can, <laughs> that's what I didn't have when I took my courses. And that's why I intentionally did it this way, you know, so the students have lifetime access to the course. I mean, they can go back in 10 years and, and, uh, and do it if they want to. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I, it's, it is a course for beginners. So people who are like experts don't need to take it or anything, but <laughs> it is a lot of fun. Um, and it's going to be opening, I think the second week of uh, November is when I'm going to be opening it back up. It opens for like five days, um, Mm -hmm. and then closes back down. And, um, 
you know, but, and then that way I can usher everyone in. We have a private Facebook group. So if you get stuck or you have a problem, post in there and like, I will come to your aid. So will all the other members, cause there's like <laughs> almost 2000 members in that group. And like, they're all wanting to help all the newbies who join, you know, and mm-hmm. everyone feels good about themselves because they're helping others. And That's awesome. um, it's, it is so much fun to see people post. This is my chair and look at what it used to look through these before and after pictures. Mm-hmm. And, um, there, you know, it's just something that the way I look at chairs is it's a way to express your creativity and uh, and your ideas and you're mm-hmm. doing it on a chair. So you can express your personality through the design on the chair that you do. And that's what makes it so much fun uh, mm-hmm. to do. So anyway, that's kind of the course in a nutshell. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So where will people be able to find it? Yeah. So on my website, which is chairwhimsy.com, um, if you go to chairwhimsy.com backslash course, that is the DIY upholstery course page. And uh, there may, if it's not open at the time you go to it, you'll see the wait list page. And if you get your name on the wait list, you'll get my emails and it's announcing, hey, it's open, you know, and come join us, you know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So um, like I said, I'll be opening it. I think the second week in November is my plan. Um, and uh, I would just love for everyone to join us. It's, it's just so much fun. Mm-hmm. So I guess, for somebody that has never done upholstery yeah. <laughs> and you say that it's easy. Is it like a, how big is the time commitment? Would you say to like do a chair and um, like what materials would they need? Yeah. So, okay. So at first you're slower, um, but you get faster. Like I can do, mm-hmm. I mean, I can do a couple chairs in a day for sure. Um, oh, wow. But, but it does. So, but I have to do it kind of in stages. So you have to strip down the chair. So you do need a few tools. The way I do it is I'm not about like buying a bunch of stuff that you really don't need. Like I'm mm-hmm. always about the bare bones tools. Mm-hmm. So basically you need a rubber mallet, um, a staple lifter and some needle nose pliers. So those are the main like hand tools that you'll need. Um, I do suggest getting a staple gun um, and a uh, compressor. So it's a pneumatic staple gun that you connect to the compressor. Those are the more expensive items. Now, there are some people who prefer to do an electric gun or a handheld stapler. They're just Mm -hmm. harder on your hands, Mm -hmm. um, honestly. And so the pneumatic gun is uh, very, very easy. I I have a freebie on my website of my favorite upholstery tools that people can download for free. So um, that's, that's it, but it has the list of everything in it, but inside Mm -hmm. the course, everything is hyperlinked to where you can buy it on Amazon. um, Mm -hmm. Or you can just go to your hardware store and get a couple of these things. Mm -hmm. Uh, The staple lifter, you probably will have to order online, but anyway, so I just have those main tools. So the, the more expensive things are the staple gun and the compressor, but some people have a compressor already. Mm-hmm. Um, and so those are the main tools that you needed some scissors. Um, mm-hmm. And as far as, you know, the fun part is really hunting down the fabric. So <laughs> we have a lot of conversations in our Facebook group about the fabrics, you know, mm-hmm. where'd you get that fabric or where, you know, and so anyone in my course can always ask me where'd I get it? Cause I will tell them mm-hmm. uh, because they bought my course. Of course, I'm going to tell right. them where I got it. But um, so the hunting of the fabrics and the figuring out of the design is really the fun part. That's really cool. Well, yeah. thank you so much for sharing all of that. Yeah. I'll have to look into it because I yeah. want to try all the things. <laughs> 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 um, but thank you so, so much for being here um, and sharing your story and all of the things, all of the creative talk just always lights me up. So um you already said that people can find you at chairwhimsy.com, chairwhimsy.com slash courses, right? For your course. Yep. Um, I will have those links in the show notes for people as well as I'll find the link for your free tools that you yep. use too. And I'll put that there. Um, so everything is all in one place for our listeners, but thank you so, so much for being here with yeah. us, Wendy. It has been a pleasure speaking with you. Oh, it's been so much fun, Monique. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's episode with Wendy from Chair Whimsy. Make sure to check out her DIY upholstery course to create your very own custom chair. 
I know I will. I'm serious about putting one of my paintings on a chair. How fun would that be? The link to her course, website, freebies, and social media are all in the show notes. Those can be found at moniquecara.com forward slash show notes forward slash episode 006. Next week, I'll be sitting down with Patsy Shaw of Shamash Art about jumping into creativity. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Finally, friendly PSA that the holidays are coming soon, so make sure to shop small, shop early, and shop local. If you haven't had a chance, check out my shop, moniquecarastudio.com. You'll find original paintings, fine art prints, and my gift shop filled with ornaments, greeting cards, and all the other fun, encouraging things. (laughs) But until next week, I will talk to you soon. If you love the show, could you do me two quick favors? First, take a screenshot of the podcast or a photo of where you're listening, post it to your stories and tag me on Instagram. I'm at it's Monique Kara. I'm so excited to hear from you and I'll always share it with my audience as well. Also, if you're listening on Apple podcasts, can you take a second to leave a quick five-star review? This helps us find more amazing humans like you and your support in these two things truly means the world to me. Thank you so, so much in advance for your kind words. Talk soon.